Hi guys, Kim here at Olive City Homestead. It is the middle of May and bright sunshine coming down as you can see. Uh, sorry if uh, the glare is intense, but that's reality here. So I did not have an April garden tour. April was a crazy month. Busy, busy, of course, with gardening and all that goes into that this time of year and some unexpected stuff right at the end of April and even last week. So I posted my Kara video last week and I said I was gonna do the May tour in just a day or two. And then, well, I got my COVID vaccine, the second round, and oh boy, did that wipe me out for two days. I was not expecting that, but all's better now. And here we are with the May garden tour, and I hope you enjoy it. I know I'm enjoying the garden right now, even though it is a lot of work. It's the kind of work that really fills you with energy because you're seeing new life grow and the perennial stuff, which is um, really the main thing that's visible in the garden right now, like the artist chokes right behind me well uh you know they're here all year but in the spring they just take on new life and that's always exciting to see so let's go around and see what is going on and what's not even started yet because believe me there's a lot not started yet and so may's going to be busy too but again in a good way You're pretty proud of yourself, aren't you? Bordering my chicken run, of course, is my herb garden. And right on the end here, my lemon verbena bush is going kind of nuts. It was, you know, of course, um, bare branches just about two months ago. But it's leafed out, sent out tons of new growth, and now going to flower which I will let it do the bees love that and then I'll cut it back after that but the leaves are great for tea whether it's flowering or not down in there I've got green onion walking green onion some chamomile some basil some more garlic uh, there's some echinacea in that pot and some random sunflowers coming up here and there here we've got some flowering time and with the bright sun you probably can't tell but this is a very pretty let's see if I can get in the shade very pretty purple light purple uh, bloom on it right now here I've got oregano about to bloom I do let my herbs flower and then cut them back got some viola down there amid some uh, lime thyme and here we've got some cilantro and there is some winter savory that is fantastic in soup by the way got some echinacea growing up tall there some green onions walking green onions which are definitely walking and sending out their stalks and look here this is the first time my sorrel has gone to flower and seed and i really love this color so i'm definitely not gonna let that happen uh, before cutting it back some more oregano here this one when it does go to flower has a gorgeous dark purple flower but right now i'm busy collecting leaves constantly because with your herbs the more uh, leaves you harvest and use you can dry them or use them fresh the more the plant will grow um, kind of like with uh, most flowers you deadhead them they grow more flowers well it's the same with your herb leaves if you cut it back stalks here and there it just grows more my tricolor sage looking super healthy and getting really much bigger this year than it has in the last two years and my lemon balm wonderful plant uh, doesn't like the heat so much so it's in this end of the herb bed where it gets shady from about noon on hey if you hear any shaking like this while um, this tour is going on it's because I have some iced coffee <laughs> One of my favorite go-tos when the weather is hot. And boy, has it been hot here. It's been 95, 100 degrees Fahrenheit for two weeks. We're talking the first two weeks of May. That's hot even for here in Zone 9B. My plants are a little confused. They're like, wait a minute, it's 48, 50 at night, and then it's 50 degrees hotter in the day. What is going on? So they're a bit stressed, but most of them are adjusting. 
Now here I have some crates with a, a little more garlic, uh, a baby zucchini, and this is a little baby Jimmy Nardello pepper plant that I'm really hoping, uh, you know, starts actually growing. Jimmy Nardellos are the, for me in this climate, they have been the hardest peppers to get uh, growing and healthy. Here I've got a Shishido sweet pepper and a giant Marconi pepper, um, some cuttings from purple tree kale, uh, those are two banana peppers, a little more garlic and some flowers. Now my artichoke bed looks good, but a little odd. And that's because uh, I had to cut out, I'd say at least 50 to 60% of the stalks. So what happened in addition to the intense heat, which really artichokes don't mind at all, is that we've had major wind. This is the first morning without wind that I can recall in about three weeks. Um, and a lot of times that wind we've had has been really severe and uh, several days of severe wind blew a lot of these stalks sideways. You can see one right there. It's almost lying on the ground heavy with artichokes. That was upright for quite a long time, but the wind just took it down. And also this bed was so crowded, it had filled up so much that um, the undergrowth was just too thick and it was a... a, a hotbed I guess you'd say for aphids so I cleared out a lot of the foliage and um, actually it's looking a lot better now and I've got lots of ladybugs on it who have taken care of the remaining aphids and as you can see I have a ton of artichokes and uh, I need to start harvesting them because well because they're delicious and also because if I don't, they're going to start blooming. Of course, the blooms on artichokes are absolutely fantastic, gorgeous purple. And I probably will let most of them go to bloom because I love that. And to be honest, most of my kids don't like artichoke. I know, crazy, right? Now, this empty bed in front of me with just that little bit of dark dianthus is the bed that had all my carrots which if you saw my last video, you saw I had a second round harvest that I made some carrot green pesto from. So it's empty right now, and I um, think I'm gonna be planting some melon in it, but I'm not sure. I'm gonna be doing up all the rest of my plantings over the next couple of weeks, and I might direct sow because the melons should just take off in there, and it's in a nice sunny spot. That bed gets sun from morning until about 4 p.m. And here is my pepper bed. Uh, that's from calling it this year. I've got a borage in the middle there. You can see the blue flowers. Bees are loving that. And uh, a little walking onion there. But I've got, let's see, corbachi pepper and cubanelle pepper. Another corbachi over there. That is a Jimmy Nardello that actually looks like it might do well and produce some actual peppers oh yeah hope so that would be really nice this is oh that's a habanera and that one is uh that tall one there's that cayenne pepper and that is an aurora pepper i love the aurora peppers because they're all different colors purple yellow orange red uh, a couple years ago i had about 15 aurora pepper plants around the place and they were in one gallon buckets and they did absolutely fabulous that way so i think actually one of the things i'm going to do this coming week is plant a bunch of aurora seeds in one gallon pots and line them up somewhere because um, if you put the pots you know on good soil in your in your garden area they do fine because the roots go out the bottom and into the ground and uh, yeah, I'm going to do that because I had such success with it a few years ago. I want to I wanna do that again. <laughs> so I've got some onions in this bed and some gladiolas in the pot. And that's a borage plant. You can see I've cut back almost all of it for whatever reason. Um, and sometimes I just don't know. Borage does great 80% of the time for me. Like I can neglect it entirely and it, it pops up everywhere and I can transplant it and it does really well. So for instance, here's one that's just popped up there. Look at how healthy those leaves look. And here's one I transplanted in the middle of the pepper bed and it looks fabulous. The bees agree. But once in a while, 10, 20% of the time, the borage plant just, I come out here one day and all the leaves are dark brown and 
Um, it looks like I watered it in the middle of, you know, 110 degree sun and I burned everything, even though I didn't water it. I don't ever do that, do that because I know I've learned my lesson. As many videos as I see of people all across the country and the world watering their plants in the sun and not having any ill effects, that does not happen here. When I water, if it's above, um, 80 degrees, um, the, it burns my plants up. So I just don't do that. I water either in the evening um, or super early in the morning before the sun is beating down hard. These are some butter bush squash. So they're basically like a butternut, but they are more um, compact. And so I'm really looking forward to trying them because I love the flavor of butternuts. Um, and yeah, this is a yellow straight neck soup zucchini type squash and I love my squash so I have uh, planted quite a bit already and will probably plant quite a bit more. <laughs> that plant right there is a society garlic and I have another one that's in bloom. I just love society garlic the smell and the pretty purple flowers. So here, hiding behind my parsnip leaves, you can see some purple blooms from the society garlic that's in this bed. And you know, I need to pull these parsnips out because I know they're big under there and I also want to use this bed for something else. All right, let's do this. Wow, that is good size. <laughs> let's try another one. Okay, I see some roasted parsnips in my future. You know, considering this is the first time I've grown these, I'm pretty happy with this. Wow, that one is really massive. They started slow because they were shaded out by my cabbage plants, which were here, um, but uh, I've got like eight here now. I'll go ahead and finish harvesting and now I'm gonna have another bed to plant. Now here I've got a little thyme and a random volunteer uh, yellow pear tomato I put in this container. This is a plant I just love. I can't wait for the, I believe falls when it starts changing color, the leaves turn all kinds of fall shades, you know, autumn colors, which I love. This is an Itea Virginia Sweet Spire and it was um, a purchase I made last year. And after I got it home in the middle of the summer, I think that it had been under shade cloth in the nursery. And so when I put it out here in my garden, it just like went into shock and lost all its leaves immediately. But this spring it burst into life and I just think it's gorgeous. My lemon trees looking good, filling out with leaves. Despite the many nights we had, probably at least 10 over the winter that were um, down in the 20s, it survived and shot out a lot of new growth and now has lemons and more coming all the time. So this bed is full of red onions, which I need to harvest. You can see they're getting pretty big. Um, and I'm gonna be planting some squash in this bed after I harvest those onions. Um, this bed, I'm gonna be direct seeding with probably some sugar pie pumpkins. Right now I just have some flowers in the middle, some bachelor buttons and some uh, gazania and a pot of uh, gladiolas. This is my Swiss chard, which until about a week ago was about seven feet tall. And then I chopped it down because it was going nuts. It was seven feet tall, but it also had spread about two thirds of the cross this uh, bed here. So yeah, I cut it back. It's about five years old now and it just keeps growing back each year and the leaves are delicious. Same could be said for my collards, my merit collards on either side of this row. They were definitely at least seven feet tall and probably about seven feet wide, each of them, and gorgeously in bloom with yellow, bright yellow flowers. But I cut them back greatly because they were in the wind, they were just falling all over the place. And also, you know, they will send out a bunch of new growth and I'm going to groom them and make them more bush-like, I think. Yeah, they're a project. So we've got some snapdragons here and some erisimum and onions and uh, some more erisimum, sometimes called wallflower, my other merit collard. 
I've taken so many cuttings off of the merit collards and I'm now uh, planting them along the duck fence line. I'll show you that in a minute. But they transplant so easily from cuttings, collards and kales do. That's something I was happy to learn as a gardener. Now this in-ground bed currently has uh, four sun gold tomatoes that I've raised from seed. And th that was seed from actually a couple of tomatoes I saved and over the winter and then this early spring, you know, back in early February, I op opened the tomatoes up and planted the seeds and raised these seedlings. And I have more planted other places, but I love the sun golds. And the other half of the bed is zucchini. So I've got four um, zucchini plants starts. You know, they're not big yet, but they will get there. It's amazing how fast those things grow. This bed is pretty much empty. There's just a couple of pots in there with some marigold and a little fig tree cutting. But, um, oh, there's one little eggplant um, right there, pin tongue, long eggplant. But otherwise, it's empty. I haven't really decided what I'm going to do. And that's kind of fun because, you know... I get to think about it and decide what I'm going to put there. So in this area, I have a bunch of pots with various things in it. I've got uh, mint. I think that's uh, spearmint. And I've got great walking green onions. I've got some tomato volunteers. I've got a delicata squash in this big pot, which has come up nicely. Some uh, bronze fennel there. And um, here's another tomato seedling. I think this is a yellow pear volunteer. Some echinacea, some oregano, uh, some flowers. And um, that's a butterfly weed coming up there. Um, and what have I got over here? Oh, I have got some more yellow squash, some flowers and mint in there. That is a, an Armenian cucumber climbing up there. Got some gorgeous snapdragons and some lilies that are looking pretty and orange. Look how bright those are. This was, um, I would say, a mistake. It is the one plant that uh, I've found so far that although it will fill out and pretty soon you won't see any of the dead lemongrass, you'll just see all the new growth, um, it takes really a long time because I left it in the pot the one gallon pot when I put it in this 15 gallon. And a lot of plants you can do that with. However, in fact, they tend to like being layered that way um, and reaching their roots down through the bottom of the one gallon pot into the larger pot. But lemongrass spreads so fast um, that it just, it gets constrained. I'm gonna cut that pot off. I have another one right back here that uh, you can see is doing much better. I mean, they start off looking the same. If I go in close, you can see the yellow dead stuff. But this fills out much faster in the spring because before I put it in the 15 gallon pot, I took the one gallon pot off. So like I said, if you're planting uh, squash or tomatoes or pretty much any veggie in a one gallon pot within a 15 gallon pot, and there are reasons for that uh, I can go into on another video. Mostly they do really well that way, but not with something like this, lemongrass or something that spreads crazily sideways, not just upwards. <laughs> I've got some uh, mint at the base there. So I've got some fennel seeds planted in that 15 gallon, some pretty blue flowers. And this pot, oh, I've got some Emerald Gem Melons, which are so good. They're like personal size, um, like a small cantaloupe size, I guess you'd say. And they're a dark green with uh, rind with stripes. And it is uh, one of the best melons I've ever had. So I'm definitely growing uh, several of those around the property. This was a seedling, hmm, sun gold, yeah. It was, uh, it came up um, right next to a larger one. So when I pl transplanted the larger one, I just removed the little seedling and put it in here and it should grow fine. Now I told you I took a lot of cuttings from my collards and my kales. And what I've been doing is planting them here along the fence line. Well, this is a dinosaur kale that I need to get out of this pot and plant. But I've got a bunch of little collards planted along the fence line and uh, this spot it actually gets a lot of shade from about 2 p.m. on which they will like and these will grow up and cover the fence go they'll be higher than the fence and um, 
You'll still be able to see into the ducts, but it will also provide a nice little natural looking barrier. I think it's gonna look really pretty. These are just some volunteer yellow pear tomatoes coming from uh, the jungle that I had in this corner last year. If you look at any of my garden tour videos from the summer of 2020, you'll see this entire corner was hundreds of yellow pear tomatoes. <laughs> it was crazy. In fact, they were so overcrowded. They were lush and green and full of green tomatoes, but they never ripen because again, they get too much shade in the afternoon. So instead I put in a table with an umbrella because even though it gets shady in the afternoon, in the morning it is bright sun. And in the corner back there, there. I have to clean it out some more, but I have the beginnings of what I'm going to do back there. It's my little tropical corner is what it's going to be. And I've got a uh, climbing rose plant. I'm going to put a trellis in there. And I, behind it, I've got a couple of um, uh, honeysuckles, which have been blooming great. They were on my covered patio and I decided, yeah, they really do like that filtered sun. So I think they'll do really well here, but I need to clean out the corner. That dead grass you see is actually behind a fence which is an expansion of my duck run. And I just need to do, it's a little project, this corner that I'm gonna be doing, including I have to cut all the uh, suckers out from this apple tree. This apple tree has been pretty much a goner since I moved here eight years ago. It had a bad case of fire blight. I somehow managed to get rid of all the fire blight and I have been getting tons of wonderful, golden, delicious apples off of it. But really it is a goner. I mean, look at this trunk. It's, it's, it's gone. It, it really is. I don't know how it's still producing great apples, but I know that its time is limited. <laughs> Every year could be its last. But you know what? I don't have the heart to cut it down right now because I enjoy those apples too much. <laughs> now, this is a three and a half foot high cattle trough that I have um, turned into a bed. It was um, three quarters of the way full of, you know, uh, yard waste, vegetable, green waste, uh, food scraps from the house. I just added to it for about eight months and it broke down and broke down. And um, then I added some soil on top of that, some compost, and this stuff is so rich. And I have planted some zucchini in it and hoping that they do super well in this. I have planted five and that might seem excessive, but this is really deep. It's really rich. I think that that the zucchinis are gonna do great. That's that's what I'm hoping. Now this is a new bed I put in. It was just a mound, but I decided to raise it higher, use it in some cement blocks. I haven't finished filling all the blocks, but this side I have, and I put in some transplants of my canna lilies because canna lilies, uh, like uh, lemongrass, spread like nuts. I have them in containers and I have them in my front garden. And I'm not kidding you, there's like an unlimited supply of these things and they are not, sensitive at all. You can be pretty rough with them getting them out and and they can look completely dead and I shove them in some dirt and guess what? They all grow <laughs> and I think they're going to do really well here. And then I have some seedlings, some zinnia seedlings planted on the ends. And this is my tomato bed. On this side I've got sun golds, my favorite. And on the other side I have Chadwick cherry tomatoes and they're all looking really good and I've never even heard of this tomato before never eaten one never grown one never seen one but my friend and fellow youtuber uh, Sarah over at the big blue house homestead said that this is one of her favorite tomatoes so I ordered some seed and I got them going and now we're going to see if I agree with Sarah. And if you want to find another gardening channel that you can enjoy, the Big Blue House Homestead. I think I've got that name right. It's, it's something pretty much like that if it's not exactly that. But Sarah over there, and I'll put a link in the description, um, has all kinds of great stuff. She's in the South, and so she grows stuff like okra and knows all the tricks and tips to um, use that kind of thing. Whereas we're like, okra is such a pretty plant, gorgeous flowers, and it's so sturdy, but what do I do with this slimy stuff? Well, she will tell you how to get rid of the slime and give you some great recipes, not just on okra and all kinds of things. So you should check her out. But yeah, Chadwick cherry tomatoes, really looking forward to trying those. And now,
guys, I have something special. I'm going to show you my variegated pink lemon tree. Uh, I'll put a link up here and in the description below to the video I took back at the very end of February when a major windstorm decimated my tree. My tree was nearly five feet tall and full of leaves and it was so gorgeous and then it broke way, way down and I thought it was a goner. I mean, it was just a little four inch stump sticking out of the ground. But look guys, look at this. It has come back to life with a passion. Now I have left this stem on just for example purposes for you. You can see that it's growing from the base and you can see its leaves dark green. This is a sucker from the root stalk of the plant. And I thought that this plant where it broke right there, where the wind broke it, had broken off too close to the graft union to produce the variety the pink variegated lemon that I wanted and I realized that the graft union is actually right here you can see it better from the other side but I'm on this side so I'm just gonna show you so both of these and all the growth above it are from the pink variegated variety the leaves are quite different you can see the variegated colors um, some of the colors are yellow some, as on this leaf, are just different shades of green, but it's definitely, all this new lush growth on the top is definitely the variety I want. Whereas this one, growing from the bottom, is quite different and is not going to give me pink variegated lemon. So I'm gonna be cutting this off. Uh, the other reason I let this one grow, and there were a few more suckers like this underneath the union uh, that I let grow for a while, um, was because, first of all, they were more aggressive, so they showed up first and they were able to feed the plant, the leaves, you know. Then these, the pink variegated lemon leaves came out later and as they became stronger and more lush, um, I realized I don't need any of the suckers anymore. I'm gonna take this last one off. Now what I'm gonna do, I have a choice. I can either leave it in the ground and if I do that, then I'm going to wanna create a new trunk. And I think what I'll do is take this branch right here and maybe prop it up tie it to the trunk a little bit loosely so it can be trained to grow vertically. However, the other option is to dig up the whole tree and put it in a large pot um, because that would raise the level of it, you know, off the ground and make it um, easier to harvest. And I wouldn't, it would be more like a, a bush, <laughs> a pink variegated lemon bush in a pretty big pot. And that's the way I'm leaning but I think I want to give it a season in the ground to get really strong and then maybe in the cool months of um, the winter when it's dormant, that's when I would transplant it. But I am so excited because I really thought this was a lost cause and I was looking forward so much to having this fruit tree in my yard and enjoying its fruit. And so um, I was both surprised and absolutely delighted when it grew back. Now my lime tree suffers a little more than my lemon trees in the cold of the winter, but you can see it is full of limes as well as new growth. Now I'll be doing another video on my fruit trees. I've got cherries and they're turning red. I've got to put tool around them or the birds are gonna eat them all. Um, but right now I thought I would show you my blueberries because look at them. I just have tons and tons of blueberries, which the birds so far are not bothering because they're not at a state of ripeness yet. So I have to keep an eye on them and really I should tool them pretty soon too before the birds get interested. But yeah, I've just got tons of blueberries on my bushes and I'm super excited about that. I did want to show you two things about this bed. One is because um, these planters were planted over Bermuda grass, guess what's coming up? in the bed. Bermuda grass, the bane of my existence on this property. Who ever thought planting Bermuda grass was a good idea? I don't know. But anyway, so you know what's going to happen eventually, maybe in the winter. I always say I'm going to do all these projects in the winter. Um, I need to dig up all these blueberry bushes, empty out these raised beds, and get rid of this, all the Bermuda and then um, put like paving stones under it so that the Bermuda can't grow back. The other thing I wanted to show you is when you have blueberries, you will have some sections that spread underground and grow up 
separate from the plant. And this is a great idea to dig down, get some root section, and then plant this in a pot and you'll have another blueberry bush. I've done that several times with these blueberry bushes and I haven't had a single failure yet. If you see a uh, what looks like a seedling of your blueberry plant that's come up kind of separate from for instance, this is the main trunk of this, and yet way over here I have this other little plant. Well, that's come from the main plant, and if I dig that up, I'll have a separate blueberry plant. Now, right behind here is the walkway I cut, and there is all the star jasmine, and as you can see, it is in bloom. Yeah, the star jasmine's actually been blooming for about two weeks now. Some of the white blossoms are starting to turn brown because it's getting close to being done, but boy, does it smell good. And, oh, hi, BB. What are you doing? Hi. Aw, are you enjoying the pot, rubbing your neck against it? Well, hello. Oh, big stretches. Uh-huh. So the plants here are all doing well. I still have several that I need to pot up, as you can see. My crepe myrtles. I did pot up my Laura petalums, so they're now in larger containers but the crepe myrtles still need to get potted up. Baby, get out of there. Get out of there. What do you think you're doing? Oh my goodness. So I did have gorgeous freesia blooms in here, but because of the busyness of April, you guys didn't get to see them. They bloomed for about two weeks and then they were gone, except for this lone survivor, this double pink freesia. I'm happy I planted them here and they will come up again next year. And these are another one of my mini experiments. Uh, those Mexican pink poppies in my front garden that I've showed you in the flower montage, they um, basically spread like crazy and take over the area and then they go into the next area and the next area. So some people don't like them, they're very invasive. However, they're very simple to pull out, to just yank out of an area. And what I discovered is, you know, kind of by accident, um, if you stick them in a pot of dirt, guess what? They root really easily and grow. I could have hundreds and hundreds of these pots if I wanted to, quite simply by going out and yanking or weeding the area that they've grown into. And these flowers, they just, after they bloom, they stay open for weeks. They stay open at night. They actually are pretty when they die back and then they bloom again. So I'm really happy with them and with my little experiment and now I plan to pot up a lot more of them and decide where to put them on my property to be pretty and pink all spring long. And here is a little something different on my back patio. I am actually growing tomatoes in grow bags and they're doing pretty well, I would say. They haven't been in here long, but they seem to like the weather under here. They get the breeze, but they're sort of sheltered from the severity of the wind. Nothing broken here. And I definitely have tomatoes growing. These are doing really well amidst my flowers and various seedlings and such. And look, I can't end my garden video without showing you this brand new water fountain I got. It was on sale and I couldn't resist it. I love the sound of running water in my garden. I've already seen a few birds perched on the side, little hummingbirds actually. So I know I'm gonna enjoy sitting at my table right there and watching the fountain. BB-8, what are you doing? <laughs> did you find my new fountain? Yes, you did, huh?
So thanks for joining me today, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the May Garden Tour. I know I did, and I plan to do another one in maybe two weeks or so. I think there's gonna be a huge amount of difference because I have a lot of plants that need, still need to be transplanted. I have a lot of seeds that I've sown that will be up by then. I'm very positive about that. It pays to be positive, I say. And you know, even though I feel a little behind, maybe some of you feel a little behind too, maybe you haven't even started yet, or maybe you just look at those pictures you see on Instagram and you say, what? Oh, well, why do I even bother? But do bother, do go forward and plant your plants, sow your seeds, because May is not too late to garden anywhere in the Northern Hemisphere. And even if you're in winter, you can be doing brassicas and, and winter garden. But here, no matter what you might see on YouTube or Facebook or anywhere else, most people are just getting started and the weather is just now warming up enough to really get going. So you have plenty of time and take your time if you're new. Don't feel like you have to do as much as all these people who've been gardening for years. Don't do as much as me. Um, I probably do too much. I have the land, I enjoy it, so I take on maybe a little too much. But I garden in a laid-back way so it works for me and that's the key you have to do what works for you so if you're new start out small or start big if that's what you want to do but just start getting out of the Sun here in my olive orchard with the chickens I just wanted to remind you you can create the life you want and the garden you want so don't let anyone ever tell you otherwise have a great week everyone and I'll see you next time